Hello everyone and welcome back to another GTA Online guide, where in this video I'm going to be pointing out 5 things that have been added or tweaked to make GTA 5 just a little less painful to play with, so with that said, let's get right into Number 1. Open Wheel Racing I remember my first time taking part in an open wheel race, it was great fun. Especially the part where I had to dodge all the noobs who were driving the wrong way around the track! Well, no more, because Rockstar have made it so that if you're trying to crash into people by going the wrong way around the track, you'll be put into passive mode so you're ghosted and you won't be able to hit anyone anymore. Fantastic! Though that's probably something they should have put in Ordinary Races 2 at the start of the game existing in 2013. I can't help but feel like there was some sort of meeting at Rockstar's offices and they were like, Okay boys, we need to milk even more cash from these suckers. Any ideas? Anyone? And then the janitor walks in the room like, Hey, maybe you could add something to stop players going the wrong way around a track in races so people will be more inclined to take part in open wheel races and thus buy an open wheel car for themselves? And they were like, oh my gosh, make it happen! Other minor changes have been made to open wheel racing too, such as visible indicators relaying information as to the car's and tyre's health, pit stops making players ghosted while they're at the pit stop, and the ability to change tyre type during a game at the pit stop just like in real racing. Number 2. Less annoyances regarding the phone. Okay, so you remember that guy whose name we used to make fun of constantly calling us and whatnot? LJT? Yeah, that's the one. What did you personally call him? I used to call him Little Johnny Tits. Yeah, he was annoying. Apparently now he's been demoted from calling us to just texting us, so that's much less having to left click and then right click rapidly just to get the phone down. Oh, it's too bad we can't do that in real life. Number 3. Returning cars. Okay, so for those who think that only being able to have one personal vehicle out at a time is stupid, which would be... Everyone? Things have got a little easier in the form of the interaction menu now allowing you to stow away your current personal vehicle without having to make use of the Motorcycle Club business abilities. Which also means that even in solo online lobbies you can now do the same whereas before if you were in a solo session and you wanted to switch through your car for some reason, which is actually something I have to do a lot, you either had to blow up the thing or drive like 100 miles away so your mechanic isn't like, Ooh, sorry, Johnny and the Spat can help you out, bruh. Number 4. More properties. Yes, that's right, we can now have 8 properties at once, which further increases the amount of vehicles any one player can own. Spoiler alert, it's a lot. Which means the total amount of money required to have a baller account with the max amount of properties and cars to fill them up just got a whole lot bigger especially with all the new vehicles added. Which reminds me, I should probably make an update on my How Much Would It Cost series of videos. Let me know if you'd like to see that. And finally, number 5, less soft locking. Yes, I too will believe it when I see it, but according to Rockstar's website with the patch notes, they've made some fixes to the netcode of the game, meaning less black screens and soft locks when transitioning between the overworld and the interior of stuff. If true and Rockstar really did fix something that they should have fixed seven years ago, then that means that vehicles like the Avenger and the Terabyte will now be less troublesome to use especially when you need them in a pinch like you're under attack by an oppressor mark 2. There's been too many times where you enter the back of the Avenger only to, to never return to the overworld. And you'd be stuck in limbo watching the YouTube buffer symbol spin around until you go insane from waiting and then throw your games console out of the window. I really do hope Rockstar really did something to actually fix the soft locking issues because these issues are what made GTA Online a laughing stock for the longest time. Too many times of people hoping to play some GTA Online together, unable to do so simply because the game just wouldn't let them because of the poor programming, to the point where people just gave up and played CSGO instead. Let me know what you guys have been experiencing since this patch came out. Are you still having issues with black screens on your game? Are you still waiting in the clouds for unacceptable amounts of time? Let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the video for loads more coming to you very soon. See you around, folks.